Kutabi here with us at Somaliland National Television. This is the English news program with me, Mohamed Adam. Let's take a look at the main stories making headlines. The President of Somaliland, Ahmed Mohamed Mohamud Silanyu, attended Friday prayers with the public in Berbera. An event takes place to commemorate the graduation of students at Mohamed Adam Chef School. The Presidential Relief Officer holds a welcome backwards for the Somaliland Ambassador to Sweden. Australia and New Zealand on a war dead on Anzac Day. The President of Somaliland, Ahmed Mohamed Mohamud Silanyu, attended Friday prayers with the public in Berbera during a visit which the President and top ranking government officials, joined by national chiefs of police and the coastal guards, are paying to Sahil's capital city. The President attended the prayers with the public at Khalid bin Al Walid Mosque in Sahil's capital city, Berbera. The President was accompanied during the prayers by the National Chiefs of Police and the Coastal Guards. The General Manager of SLN TV, Khadar Hassan Ali Gas, and the Secretary of the President. Before prayers, Sheikh Salaban Saeed Ali provided Friday sermon to the attendees at the mosque, frequently emphasizing public prayers which will be held throughout the regions of Somaliland to pray Allah for pouring rains. The Ministry of Religious Affairs also announced that the rain-seeking public prayers will be held throughout the regions of Somaliland due to decrease in the seasonal rain precipitation. This is not the first time the President of Somaliland attends prayers with the public at Khalid bin al Walid Mosque in Berber. On the contrary, the President attended public prayers with the public at this mosque and several other mosques throughout the regions of Somaliland during work-related visits which the President has been continuing to pay to all regions of Somaliland since holding office. The Assembly of the Somaliland Umbrella of Diaspora Communities has been held in Helsinki. Several diaspora representatives, political figures and parliamentarians of several European countries were invited to the meeting. The Assembly of the National Umbrella of Somaliland's Diaspora Communities was held in Helsinki. Members of the Umbrella, including Chairman of the National Umbrella of Diaspora Communities, Abdurrahman, spoke to SLN TV correspondents. He stated that the meeting was planned by the Umbrella to increase the cooperation amongst the Somaliland diaspora throughout Europe and the United States, and ensuring that all diaspora communities are united under a common umbrella in helping the citizens in Somaliland to better progress for the nation. The chairman also stated that the assembly took place expectedly and confirmed the results of the assembly will be displayed to the press. The umbrella invited several guests of diaspora to the assembly, including Professor Ahmed Ismail Samatar and the chairman of the political party, as well as a number of distinguished guests, including members of the Finnish parliament. The chairman of the umbrella expressed hope that the results of the assembly will further intensify cooperation between the Somaliland diaspora. The presidential relief officer, Amina Mahmoud Diria, held a welcome banquet for the Somaliland ambassador to Sweden, Rosa Chama Ilmi. The event had in attendance government officials, women rights advocates and other distinguished guests. The director of the presidential relief office, speaking at the welcome banquet event, reiterated the significance of commemorating every individual citizen for playing a remarkable and extraordinary role in national development. The director pointed out the momentous and creditable role that the Somaliland ambassador to Sweden plays in bettering progress for Somaliland and systematically working to ensure that Somaliland's international relations with the world is increased. As the current administration prioritized, it is a paramount for the country's search of international recognition. Vice Minister of Health, Nima Hussein Qawden, the Vice Minister of Labour and Social Affairs, Shukri Harir Ismail, and the Presidential Consultant of Women Affairs, Amal Haji Misan, collectively emphasized the importance of commemorating the national task and assignments through which the Somaliland ambassador to Sweden committed and dedicated to ensuring that Somaliland's diplomatic ties with Sweden has always been strengthened at an unprecedented degree. Somaliland's ambassador to Sweden, Rodo Jama Elmi, provided brief remarks at the event. She appreciated the welcome banquet which was organized by the director of the presidential relief office and expressed gratitude to the way that she was welcomed during her stay in of Somaliland. The ambassador also continued to add that she will boost efforts towards stepping up the diplomatic ties between Somaliland and Sweden under the auspices of the country's platform of international relationships. 
The event concluded with an honorary certificate being provided for the Somaliland ambassador to Sweden due to the towering and brilliant role that the ambassador continues to play in achieving the objective sought to be reached. A ceremonial event took place at the headquarters of Golis University in the capital city of Somaliland, Hargeisa, commemorating the graduation of students who ended the secondary level schooling education at Mohammed Adan Chef School. The Deputy Coordinator of Marodi Jaxx Regional Office for Education provided initial remarks at the event, emphasizing the importance of education for every developing nation and pledged increasing cooperation by the Ministry of Education and Higher Studies in ensuring that quality education was provided for the Somaliland students in the capital city and the country as a whole. The Vice President of Golis University, Aydiris Mohamed Abib, commended the role that Mohamed Adan Shafi School plays in providing students with improved schooling education and ensuring that the school produces students with great understanding of education and their future role in the national development. The headmaster of Mohammed Adam Shafi School, speaking at the ceremonial event, emphasized the role that the school has been playing in bettering the knowledge of students ever since it was established, and the services it provides ranging from primary level to secondary level education. The headmaster pledged that the school will continue serving the students with the ultimate intent of providing them with excellent schooling education. Other esteemed guests at the ceremonial event stated that it is a necessity that every citizen has some degree of of education to make sure that the literacy rate in Somaliland were increased to a degree which is comparable to the developed nations. You're still tuned into the English news program on SLN TV, the only Somali speaking channel with an English news program. And now for the main international headlines in detail. A war of words broke out between the US and Russia over Ukraine on Thursday. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry warned Moscow it had not taken a single step to enforce the Geneva meeting to defuse tensions and he threatened more sanctions. And the last week's accord between Ukraine, Russia, the U.S. and the EU, militia in Ukraine were supposed to disarm and give up control of seized state property. Kerry said, the window to change course is closing. President Putin and Russia face a choice. If Russia chooses the path of de-escalation, the international community, all of us, will welcome it. If Russia doesn't, the world will make sure that the cost is for Russia will only grow. Russia in turn accused the US of pulling the strings in Ukraine and destabilizing it. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Lavrov called on Washington to do more to help. I'm convinced that our American colleagues can and should use all their influence to force the current Kiev authorities not just to acknowledge but to turn its responsibility for what's happening into action, Lavrov said. Exactly 99 years on, Australians and New Zealanders have travelled to Gallipoli in Turkey to honour soldiers killed in the ill-fated First World War landings there. Volunteers from Down and from the backbone of Allied forces attempt to capture the Dandel. However, the campaign failed and tens of thousands of Allied troops lost their lives. Volunteers from Down and from the backbone of Allied forces attempt to capture the Dardanelles. However, the campaign failed and tens of thousands of Allied troops lost their lives. The solemn commemoration on what is known as Anzac Day was marked in the presence of royalty in the Australian capital Canberra. Britain's Prince William joined veterans and serving military personnel on what is the country's national day of remembrance. His wife Kate also paid her respects to the fallen at an event marking the end of their three-week tour of Australia and New Zealand with their baby son Prince George. That's it for this edition of the English News Program. Thanks very much for being with us. You can catch us at the same time tomorrow. Until then, take care and goodbye.